In part one of achieving photorealism, we'll look at working with HDRIs. So we can see here we've got Suzanne plonked in the middle of a scene with a HDRI. And this is when you're a new beginner, uh, this is probably something you're going to come across and be quite pleased with it because you've got all the nice lighting and you've got reflections from the environment and things. But on closer inspection, there's quite a lot of things wrong with it. Now, the first thing you're going to probably find out to do is to add a plane, a ground plane, and give it a shadow catcher. So if you go into the properties for the plane and then go under visibility, you've got the option for a shadow catcher. So if you turn this on, you can see we've now got nice lighting. Just turn that spotlight off briefly. We've got the shadows on the ground, which we didn't have before. Just turn that off. You can see we've now got shadows underneath there. The problem is though, we've still got problems and the problems are, we've got the incorrect reflections. The reflections are coming from miles away. And it's also going to be the colour of that ground plane. So if we go into the material for this, we can set the material to something similar to the ground. So E and then click on a green area. And now it's more realistic. We are getting green, but it's still incorrect. Because in places like this, for example, at the bottom, this would be reflecting the leaves on the ground. And you'd also just here, you'd have a reflection of this leaf and you'd have this sort of uh, whatever that is there reflecting somewhere around about here. So while it looks better, it's still not realistic. And the problems continue. If we add a light, you can see we've now got a strong light source illuminating Suzanne. You can see we've got this light source up here, really strong, and it is having a big impact on Suzanne, but it's not lighting up the ground. So that's another giveaway that there's, uh, it's not very realistic. And the final problem, well, two more problems in fact. We've got indirect lighting is incorrect. So we've got the lighting bouncing around from underneath. It hits the, hits the floor, bounces up, and then illuminates the object. If we make Suzanne not metallic, let's make her uh, just a standard white. The indirect lighting is not correct. It should be green. Even though if we set this to green here, uh, sorry, not there, on this one, set this to green, we are getting that now, but we've got to manually set it up. And it's not taking into consideration all the different differences in color. So for here, for example, it would be brown rather than green. So you've got the brown leaves right underneath Suzanne. And the final problem is if we want to have a reflection, let's just make Suzanne bright red. And we'll click on that ground again. And this time we'll make it black. And let's make it highly reflective. So let's turn roughness right down. You can see we've got reflection now, but it's black and white. So we're not getting a color reflection. And that's the final issue that you've got with the shadow catcher. So what we need to do to fix all of these problems is we'll get rid of the shadow catcher. You can see now I've got that colored reflection, but temporarily, let me just turn that off. We need to somehow map the HDRI environment onto this plane. And it's really easy in fact. We'll just go into the world shader and we'll copy these three nodes. So we've got the environment texture and then we've got the two mapping textures. So control C, I'll copy those. I'll go into the planes material. And I'm just gonna copy this in, control V. And as soon as I plug this in here and come back out, we are gonna get an effect, but at the moment you can see We've got the sky on the ground, which obviously is not right. So we need to somehow map the HDRI environment onto this uh, plane correctly so that it matches the location of the HDRI in the viewport or in the camera. So what we'll do, we, this is only going to work with a camera. Shift A, we're going to add a camera. And we need to find a location that we want. So maybe somewhere about here and I'm going to do control alt zero and that's going to align the camera to the current view I'm going to camera properties and just decrease that until we uh, the focal length until it matches up with the viewport all right so in the shader for the plane we go over here and we've got some options of how to map the this HDRI environment onto the plane now we can use object and it's going to do something. And we could even 
go into here, into Origins, and we could move that Origin up, and you can see it's going to change the um, how it's how it's mapped onto the plane. But that's still not correct. So what we need to do is map that onto something else, and it's going to be the camera, because obviously the camera is always going to be controlling the HDRI's location. So we go in here, and we'll choose camera. And now we've got that set, but the problem is it's still incorrect because it's also using the camera's rotation. And all we want is the is the, is the, is the um, location. We don't want the rotation at all. So we need to use something that only has the location and not the rotation of the camera. And this is very straightforward. We'll come out of here and let's just zoom out. So we've got the we've got the camera here. I'm going to click on it to select it. I'm going to do Shift S and I'm going to say cursor to select it. Let's move the 3D cursor over here and now I'm going to do Shift A and I'm going to add an empty. And that, that's going to place the empty at the location of the camera, although to be fair it doesn't really matter, I could put this anywhere. What I'm going to do now is go into the constraint and I'm going to say copy location, press E to bring up the eyedropper and then click on the camera and now the empty has moved to the location of the camera but it's never going to inherit its rotation or anything else. It's just going to be the location. And that's exactly what we need to access on the shader. So we'll change this from camera to empty. Now, wherever we move the camera, the empty will follow, and that HDRI is going to change as well. So if we go into camera view, you'll see now, we can't even see the edges of the, of the plane anymore. The plane's still there, and you'll notice as well, we are getting correct lighting and shadows. And also, let's just click on the plane. Let me make this full screen. And we'll make sure we can move the camera with the viewport. Now if we move around, let's click on the plane, we'll go into the material and we'll just temporarily turn the, turn the, the specular up, oh, sorry, and the roughness down. You can see now we're getting the correct coloured reflections. So every single problem we had is gone. You'll also notice, turn those reflections down, we've got lighting from that uh, spotlight. So the spotlight, we turn that off and on. Not only is it lighting Suzanne now, but it's also lighting the HDRI. So it's really powerful. And it's just basically, it makes everything look ultra realistic because every single aspect is going to be correct. So for example, let's bring this over here. Let's bring let's try and find something. In fact, let's bring it in. There we are. So you can see here the uh, white lines on the road reflecting correctly on there. So if we zoom out a little bit, you can see the edge of the HDRI. So we need to somehow get rid of that. And straight away you can see basically it's just got more blue in it because the HDRI is in effect lighting itself. And with it, with a blue sky, we're going to get a tinge of blue on that ground. So we'll go into the material, we'll drop down an RGB curve. And we'll just go into the blue, and I'm going to turn that down a bit until it matches better. And it's still a bit too bright. So I think before I do the blue, I'm going to do the brightness. So I'm going to click on C, and that will do all three. I'll bring that down until it matches better. Let's not forget as well, we've got that spotlight. So let me just bring that down a bit. Make sure it's not lighting anything else on the scene. I'll keep bringing this down. Now we'll bring that blue down a bit. bit this bit is a bit finicky. I think we need a little bit more red. Just see here, we've got a little bit more red at the edge there. So something like that. So now we can move the camera around and everything's going to be absolutely spot on. Let's go in, let's go in this leaf here, for example. We can see we've got that leaf reflecting there. We've got all the ground reflecting correctly. Let's turn that spot on. And there you go. So it's looking, that could be photographed. Uh, nobody would know. It's, it's perfect, basically. And you're just not going to get that otherwise. If you try and use the shadow catcher, you're going to lose that. So that's one of the main tips. Now, what you need to bear in mind is that 
a HDRI is photographed in one location. So you need to make sure you only move in one location. Shift tilde, and then if I look around like this, then that is always going to be planted exactly correctly. Whereas if I go into a different HDRI, at the moment you'll see we've got, this is quite an interesting effect actually. We've got two HDRIs now mangled together, which can be useful. You know, it, it, this is a, a good way of um, building different scenes um, with different grounds and things. But anyway, I'll rotate this around. We need to change this now in here as well. So we give this the same map. And we need to match the rotation. So we've changed this to 266 over here. And at the moment, it's at 172. Now, I could just type in 266. What I'm going to do instead is right click on this. I'm going to say copy as new driver. There we are. And then I go into this one, right click and choose paste driver. And now they're always going to match up. And obviously, this is a different HDRI. So let's reset or let's actually get rid of that. And it would be the same process basically on this, on this one. But the reason I've come to this one is because if we go on here, now then, let's rotate the HDRI around till the ground lines up. Somewhere about there. I'd probably want to go in now and modify this. So I'd move that across just so it lines up at the edge. And you can see here this edge is going over the window, so I don't want that. What I'll do instead is just come out of here. I want to select this vertex down here, and I'll go back into camera mode. Now I can move that to the left until that lines up. Somewhere about there. Maybe move that a bit more. Uh, this side, let's bring that in a little bit. So I bring it so it lines up with the edge. And then I'll select the one at the far end there and just move that independently. Somewhere about there. Now we've got this HDRI in place. If I move the camera. You'll see now that the floor is actually going over the window, which is not what we want. So we always want it to stay aligned however we've set it up. So let me just realign that. And that's the reason why we'd always use shift tilde. So you look around with shift tilde and you're basically doing the same as the, uh, your, your location is identical now to the camera that took the HDRI and the ground will always be correct. And if you just need to bring in shift AS RGB curve again, and we'll just quickly change this. This is this is this more blue or is it just darker? Let's just turn up the overall. So somewhere about there. If we turn up reflection as well, we're getting a nice reflection. Suzanne. Might make Suzanne a bit bigger. And everything's correct. So we've got the coloured reflection, just you can just see it there. And it's reflecting correctly based on the colour. Obviously a, a brighter colour doesn't reflect as much as a a darker colour. So if I was to turn this down, I'm gonna get more reflections. And we're also getting reflections from the HDRI, but they are incorrect. If I want those to be correct. What I'll do is, let's go in here. I'm going to select the edges, this one and this one. And I'll do EZ and I'll extrude those up to the ceiling. And just line them up a little bit better. And then number three, select the faces. I'm going to separate those by selection. And I don't want those to be reflective, so I'm going to give those. A different material and instead of plugging it into the base color for these ones I'm going to plug it into the emission and now if we turn off overlays you see we've got a reflective floor and if you look at the reflections here they are reflecting very accurately what is actually being shown there whereas if we turn those let's call these walls we'll turn those off you'll see the reflection is completely incorrect. So turn those back on, 
we've basically modeled the environment, very basic model of the environment, just to make sure we capture the correct reflections. And again, if we turn that spotlight on, we're getting those correct uh, illumination on the floor. So it's a really powerful technique and uh, went on a bit longer than I expected, but hopefully it's useful for you. Uh, the series is going to have a lot of sort of things you can do to achieve photorealism. Um, so make sure you subscribe. I hate saying that, but if you want to know about that, subscribe and um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.